You're listening to Women Are the Journey with your hostess with the mostest. That's right, me, Audrey Groeschel. We've got all your journeying here. We've got the story of the shift where women entrepreneurs talk about their own unique journey on the road of owning a business as a woman. We have the journey of Chew on This, where I talk about the masculine structures of our society, how they hinder women in particular, but all of us in general. We'll open up the potentials of what a balance of feminine and masculine can give to us and to our planet. Join me as we explore the infinite possibilities of a journey of balance and transformation. Howdy, howdy, everybody. I am really excited to introduce our next guest. Her name is Kelly Fries, and I'm very fortunate in the fact that she's actually a friend of mine. And I'm really excited for you to hear her story. There's a couple of reasons why. But first off, let me just give her her introduction. She's an integrative nutritional health coach and French and British aromatherapy student. She helps women with thyroid imbalance understand what is going on with their body and helps them ease back into balance without getting overwhelmed or feeling out of control. Many of her clients have called her the hormone whisperer, and she strives to live up to that title so that she can have it engraved on a plaque one day. She lives in Austin, Texas with her incredibly supportive husband, five active kids, fluffy golden retriever, and a very quiet Russian tortoise. (laughs) I can't imagine a tortoise being quiet. Well, the reason why I think you're going to enjoy Kelly is multiple, but Some of the things that she talks about are the feeling of being unqualified to actually be a health coach because she got sick. She talks about nobody's meant to be an island and that you need to have accountability in being honest with yourself about whether you are taking care of yourself or not. And I'm going to introduce her new program as well. Beginning in February, Kelly is opening up a new program called the Younger Living Group Program. And in this program, you're going to get daily tweaks that you can implement in your life, including tweaks for exercise, nutrition, and mindset that can be used immediately. You'll get meal guide ideas. You'll get an exercise book full of exercises that are completely doable every day. She's going to do live videos to answer questions and offer support. And there's a private coaching group for team support. The best of all is that you get a 30 minute coaching call with her that can be used before or during the 21 day program. And obviously there's more than that, but those are the highlights. You can sign up at the link in her bio and get in on this ground floor transformational program. Now let's listen to Kelly. All right, welcome into this week's Women Are the Journey, where we are speaking with Kelly Fries, and we're going to hear her story of the shift. Welcome in, Kelly. Hi, thank you so much, Audrey. Thank you for being here. I'm super excited to hear your story. Uh, just a quick disclosure uh, Kelly and I are friends. We have known each other for a couple of years now, and she is one of the members of my Ms. Mind, my personal Ms. Mind, where we work on business together and all sorts of various other sundry items. <laughs> so I, I do know a little bit of Kelly's story, but we're going to hear a little bit more, maybe just a little bit different, I should say, than everything that I know up until now. So I'm really excited to have her here. And really excited to hear her story. And as for that, I'd say let's get just dive right in. And Kelly, why don't you tell us where you are right now? Um, sure. Right now, I am working on launching my brand new 2018 21 day program. Um, I'm really excited about it because my my main focus has always been thyroid and autoimmune people. However, I'm actually through this program, I'm able to help people with metabolic health issues. And through that, we're able to reverse, not, I can't say reverse, but um, 
Better you're not, not allowed to, yeah, you bring that out and you're not allowed to say those things. <laughs> That's right. We would never do that, but we're able to balance and get people healthier whenever they experience a health crisis, which I've realized is something I'm very passionate about because I've experienced a health crisis. So we're, um, I ran a couple of friends there that we were able to help balance their hormones. Um, I had a girl who was starting to go towards hypothyroid issues. And just after 21 days of doing this, she went to her doctor and he was like, okay, you're good. Keep on doing what you're doing. Awesome. I'm not going to prescribe medicine for you. Um, and I'm not saying that medicine's bad. I think that medicine is a gift, especially because we live in a world where we can have medicine. Yeah. But when I'm able to watch people not drop 60 to $70 a month on medicine and instead, you know, go on a trip with their family after a couple of months or, run a race that's just incredibly exciting um so um and the group is called the it's a group coaching program and it's called the younger living club and i have also just finished up um i'm a collaborator in a book called mompreneur the real journey which cool. shares a lot about my journey as a businesswoman and a mom and balancing those two um and so that one always a uh, a definite balancing act it is. And um, that launches February 28th. And I'm incredibly excited about that. That's so exciting. Yeah. I love that. Now, and that's, this is your health coaching business, correct? That mm -hmm. you're do, running the 28, 21 day, right? Yes. The 21 day program will be my health coaching business. Yes. That's awesome. And uh, how many people can you take into this program? Um, I'm limiting it at 50. That okay. gives you a nice, intimate group because you get to know everybody very very well um and then from there people can go on on that and do it again or they can take what they've learned and go on their merry way but i'm limiting limiting it to 50. awesome mm -hmm. awesome that sounds great i'm really excited yeah. i can't wait to see what happens i can't either <laughs> <laughs> all right well then let's get started on the stories so take us back to that crisis, that moment, and tell us what got you started on this journey. Um, yeah. So in 2015, I had just finished up um, the Mastering Imbalances for Thyroid um, Health Coaching Program after I graduated from the Institute for Integrative Nut Nutrition. Okay. I didn't have thyroid issues. In fact, I didn't even know anybody with thyroid issues. <laughs> I just felt like I was supposed to take this course and I'm a person, if I feel deep down, like I am supposed to take something, I just do it. How interesting. Yeah. So I took the course and as I was finishing up, I was getting ready to go to a speaking engagement and looked up and noticed a lump on my throat and kind of freaked out. Didn't tell my husband, <laughs> went and, I went and did my speaking engagement and I have no idea how it even went. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that was a Saturday on Monday. I called my doctor and my doctor was like, there's no way that you have a nodule on your thyroid. She was like, you're too healthy for that. Um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> okay. Yeah. But then on my way home from the, I lived like five minutes from my doctor's office on the way home from my doctor's office. I got a call scheduling a biopsy and um, a scan of my neck. And I was like, well, my doctor's crazy and she lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> and this whole time, like I, I knew that I had cancer, um, but I kept on like putting on a brave face of like, I'm a warrior. I can do this. And um, my biopsy came back inconclusive, which is incredibly common for thyroid cancer. Really? And, yes. But um, it's, it's so funny to me because like they, they demand that you have this biopsy, but then like 90% of the people they're like, yeah, it was, it was inconclusive. That's bizarre. Yeah. I think and they needed a better test. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, probably. <laughs> um, and so the, the um, oncologist looked at me and she goes, so you need to have this cut out as soon as possible. And I was like, well, I'm supposed to go on vacation in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and you're just not going to mess up my vacation with a stupid surgery. And, and she was like, oh, yeah, totally. Go on vacation, you know, think about it. And when you get back, let us know. Because thyroid cancer is considered a lucky cancer because it's incredibly slow moving. Okay. 
And so I went on vacation and I was trying all kinds of like natural remedies that I had learned about. Right. And while we were hiking in the Grand Canyon, I told my husband, I was like, I can't breathe. This is, this is pushing on my windpipe. And he was like, well, then you're going to go home and have it cut out. Like we're just, um, so I came back and had, had surgery and woke up to my husband leaning over me saying, you have cancer. Mm. You, You were right this whole time. And like he, the poor guy, just like tears streaming down his face, Aww. and I'm groggy from drugs, and I'm like, "It's okay, I can fly." <laughs> <laughs> so those were our first words after surgery. And <laughs> you have like, cancer, oh. and I can fly. Okay, yes. <laughs> with enough pain meds, anybody can fly. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> and um, after he left, and everything just sunk in, I just started bawling, and I couldn't stop. And I was like, I'm a health coach. I'm supposed to help people with thyroid problems and with, you know, awful weight that they can't ever get off. Like that was my whole mission was to help people that had had weight that they had done all the yo-yo diets and they could never get off of it. And here I am with cancer. Like I'm obviously not qualified to do anything. And um, I went home when, when they released me from the hospital and I just went on this huge emotional journey for a year where I would try to launch a program and I would fall on my face. And I had, I had clients that I was working with that behind the scenes, because we didn't have my medicine properly regulated at the time. Like I gained back 50 of the 75 pounds I had, I had lost previously years before. Wow. And I was like, great, now I'm an obese health coach. And I, had to stop working out for a while because my body just couldn't handle it. And I went into stage three adrenal fatigue oh, wow. because my body just could not do um, what it had done in the past because it wasn't, it wasn't the same body right. and emotionally I wasn't the same person. Um, and so I made the full switch over to thyroid clients and I helped a lot and I, um, <clears throat> I helped a lot of clients and then um, like it just stopped. Like, I was like, I just can't do anymore. I'm tired. And so I spent another six months working on me. That's when we met. Yeah. And I would talk about, I was like, I should do this. And I was like, I'm just not ready to. Yeah. And um, I finally feel ready to do that again. And it's, it's, so, it's so funny to me because when I was like, okay, I'm ready to start working, like, um, things started picking up. Like, I was asked to write the book. Um, in my aromatherapy, I also am an aromatherapy student and with my aromatherapy, being able to fuse the two, like clients have just come out of the woodwork. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I know exactly. And I'm like, okay, like I'm good. I'm, I'm happy to do this again. My doctor started referring clients, one-on-one clients to me and I'm like, this is great. And I'm helping not just thyroid people now, but anybody that's had a health crisis because it's an emotional toll on you more than anything. And so I think I had to go through all of that to be where I am now. Yeah. Well, tell me this, when you did, like when you, right after your diagnosis and the surgery and everything, did you take time off? I really didn't. (laughs) Like I just jumped right back in to show everybody that like I could just shake it off. Like everything was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is not something I would advise anybody to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. No. No, you never gave yourself a, a, a break or a time to heal or even integrate what had happened to you. Mm-mm. No, I, um, I, I felt like I had to prove that it was no big deal. Mm. Um, I was told a lot of times that I had the good cancer because you don't have to go through chemo. Right. They they give you a radiation pill instead. Right. Um, which I was which I opted out of. Um and so I was like, okay, you know, I'm good, you know, just toss my hair back. And in the natural health world, which is where I was, most of my friends and everybody that I had graduated with, that's where we were all hanging out, you know. Yeah. Um, even doing the surgery was a big deal. So I'm here like I can't believe you did that. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? You know? And so Huh. Uh, oh yeah. Because people, you know, people opt out of that all the time and they, 
choose to do like juicing or right. um, other things. And I was like, but I did what was right for me. Right. And so that's why I tell people all the time is just because that worked for one person, it's not going to work for you, be it right. diet or exercise or even in the business world, just because it works for you, you know, you doesn't work for me and that's okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just, okay. So how long, I mean, really this just, I didn't realize that you literally just like went from one bing, 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 bing and never stopped to slow down. Mm-mm. I just think that's incredible. And I get incredible or crazy, one or the other. Well, in a way, I mean, I guess it's one of those things that we as women do anyways, because one of the things that Mm -hmm. I mentioned in my intro to you was that, or for you was that, you know, you homeschool your five children Mm -hmm. and that is a full-time job alone. I mean, just being a mom is a full-time job. And then homeschooling is like another full-time job. And then you have a business going and then you get cancer and then you never take a moment for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Which is not advisable. So if you're listening to this and you feel like you're crazy, just take a break, you know, go on vacation, go sit, go lock yourself in a room. (laughs) Yeah. Even if that's the vacation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I never took time off. And I, and like I said, I didn't feel like I could um, because I, I had a lot of unrealistic expectations on myself. Mm. Um, stepping back and reviewing those expectations uh, has been very helpful. And, you know, yes, I do homeschool my five kids. My husband also, you know, he works from home and he, he helps homeschool those five kids. So that's, that's a blessing in and of itself. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and having that backup has always been nice. Well, I guess my question would be at this point, then what is, what's changed as far as the expectations? Because you, you just talked about these expectations that you'd had on yourself, that you'd placed on yourself. Mm -hmm. And what is the difference then from say that two years ago to Mm -hmm. right now? Mm -hmm. So first of all, I'm not waking up at 5am to go work out. (laughs) And and you laugh, but that is a huge expectation. You know, you hear all the time, you know, wake up before, you know, work out before your body knows what it's doing. (laughs) Your body doesn't like that. (laughs) um so I've I've actually and that sounds minor but it's huge in that I wake up I don't wake up at five o'clock in the morning anymore um but then I also I don't work out until 12 o'clock in the afternoon it's my lunch break um and that gives my body especially my adrenals time to wake up but it's also a way to just it's a refresher you know if I've been sitting doing math with my boys um then that's like time for me to take a break so that we don't all, our brains don't blow up. But on the days that I meet with clients in the morning, that's also a way to get up out of the chair and move my body Yeah, and see people because I work out with people. Um, so that's, that's important. Um, the other expectation is that I'm no longer trying to fill my calendar with one-on-one clients. I have opened up group programs, which um, I had never really done before because I've wanted these great one-on-one clients. The yeah. struggle with having tons of great one-on-one clients is that there's only one of me. And yeah. so I was working, you know, three nights a week meeting with one-on-one clients or, or something and my calendar was extremely full, mm. but not a bad thing, but then no, no, not a but bad thing. also not really a good thing at that point. No, not yeah, not at all. And and so I I have limited the amount of one on one clients that I take to about five. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm I, like I said, I've opened up the group program. And then um, I also <laughs> have work hours. People are not always accept- <laughs> like, able to get access to me <laughs> uh, because I can't be all things to all people. So like my phone does get shut off or. You know, if you're private messaging me at 10 o'clock at night, yeah, I'm not going to answer you. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and those are all just like, like when you hear them, you're like, well, of course you did that. 
Right. But when you're in business for yourself and you're just starting, you don't think that you can do that. Right. And then um, another thing is that I, like, we have a clean house, but it's not spotless. And I no longer take it upon myself to make sure that it's spotless. So I, um, so those are, those are some of the little things um, that I've done to lower those expectations and take that off of me. And I've, um, I've also been, especially in the last year, very, very open about what all happened and um, how I felt about it where previously I had kept it very, very bottled up in private Mm -hmm. and just shared a little bit. And there's beauty and there's healing in telling your story. There is very much so. Mm -hmm. Well, then I'm curious then what made you decide to share the story? Like what made you, because really I think this sounds like sort of part and parcel of everything that you've been through is Mm -hmm. it's a progression, but I want to know like, what was the catalyst for you that made you decide that sharing was a good thing for you? Yeah. So, um, I was reading a book by, I don't even know who it was by now, but it was about thyroid and how. Um, a lot of people with thyroid illness, um, where your thyroid is, it's right over your throat chakra. Mm -hmm. And so it's people that don't feel like they can, um, especially women that they just don't feel like they have a voice and they can't talk. Right. And, um, I was sitting there and I was reading that and I was like, that's so true. And so I told one person like my whole story Hmm. and, um, just the struggles that came with it and, and everything. And after I did that, I was like, I feel so good. Uh-huh. And um, she was like, you should tell everybody that. And I was like, yeah, nobody wants to hear about that. And she was like, no, a lot of people want to hear about that because yeah. it's so, it, it's going to resonate with so many people, especially moms. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so, um, I just it sounds wrote, like you, it sounds like you were really easy to talk to or talk into about this. You were really, it sounds like you were reluctant. I was reluctant because, and you know, this being in business for yourself, like you want to have this, like I have all my crap together Yeah. and I don't have any struggles. <laughs> and so yes. at the same time that I was sitting there kind of like, do I do that? Do I do it or not? Um, was actually when we were in our, in the Ms. Mind and you were in the middle of like writing everything that you had been going through. Yeah. And I was like, well, like you, I'm watching you, you seem so much lighter and freer and more open to business. And I was like, well, if it's working for Audrey, I wonder if it would work for me. <laughs> and then, um, so I shared it in a private Facebook group. Um, and somebody was like, you need to meet, this other coach that's writing, that's putting together this book. And I was like, Oh, I'd love to write a book. And she was like, well, it's a collaboration. And I was like, okay. And so we talked and she was like, you should totally collaborate on this, but then you should write your own book. And I was like, Oh, I don't have enough for that. (laughs) It just kind of domino effect. Like I shared it with one person and I was watching you and reading um, this, this book. And so that's what, that's what's, Bird everything together. So now what would be your choice when it comes to like the personal stuff or the crisis that would happen in your life now? What would be your choice at this point? Would you share? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like my, my goal has always been if I could help one person, then I would be, that would be awesome. Um, now my dream is to share it with thousands of people and be able to help as many people as possible. And so, you know, having a crisis, like it sucks, especially in the midst of it, but the good that you can do from that mm-hmm. is, it's a blessing. And it sounds so weird to be like, yes, I had cancer and it was a blessing <laughs> because it changed everything. But yeah, totally. It was, it was a blessing. So what actually made you slow down? Um, what actually made me slow down? Um, realizing that 
I couldn't do anymore. Like there was one, I mean, there were times when I would wake up and I was like, I cannot get out of bed today. And mm-hmm. looking at my kids and we would like read in my bed and I'm like, this is so ridiculous. Like I'm, my kids aren't even getting like 10% of me because mm-hmm. I'm so flipping tired. And, um, and, and realizing like my oldest, he's 12 now. He was, he was younger, but like he was talking about college and I'm like, that's so soon. Yeah. And I would never want my kids to be like, yeah, like mom's always tired, never felt good. Like I would never want them to remember me that way because I was so busy being all things to all people. And, um, and so it was, it was incredibly important that he got the best of me and that my grandkids get the best of me because it's, I mean, like I said, he's 12, but you know, girls are trying to become interesting. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you still have a ways to go, dear. Don't worry. Uh, uh, oh, I, yeah. Thank God. Um, <laughs> but you know, in five years, he'll be in college and yeah. that could be anywhere. Yeah. You never know. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was my kids and it was, wanting to go hike with them and have fun. And you can't do that when you feel like you're going crazy. So what did you do? So this, I mean, I guess that that's the question is like, what did you do that, that shifted everything for you? First, I just stopped. Um, I didn't take any more clients. I didn't do anything work-wise and I just, I spent the time journaling, meditating. Um, I met with you ladies in the mid's mind. I did my non-dominant handwriting because Audrey said it would be good for me. (laughs) And it was. And I looked at like my old notebooks and I was like, what was my goal? What were my goals when I started? Hmm. How have my goals changed? And I started writing out where I wanted to be in 10 years. And then from there, what was I going to do to get there and being exhausted and hating life? Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's not going to get you to your goals. Yeah. And, no, not really. Yeah. And then, um, and one of the Ms. Minds, you said, what would, what does your future self want? What would your future self do? And I was like, well, my future self is health coach extraordinaire. And so <laughs> she would not tell her client to be, to be doing everything that I'm doing. And so then I wrote out who, my, who I wanted to help and how I wanted to help them. And I also had to decide if I wanted to stay in business because sometimes the answer is no. For me, the yeah. answer was very much yes. Um, so I took a good, I would probably say two months and just – stopped. I stopped stressing about business. I just did whatever I wanted to do and whatever I would have told a client of mine to do. So that was, you know, meditating, having silent times, reading because I love to read yeah. and, and not reading for business, reading for pleasure and for business, because to me they're intertwined, but sometimes you just need to read a trashy romance novel. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't I that do. the truth? Ain't that the truth? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I went for walks. I went for hikes. I found out how much I love hiking in Austin with my kids. And um, and from there, you know, everything else was born. But I would say if somebody's in the middle of a crisis and they don't know, like, what the heck to do, just stop. Be still. Hmm. And there's nothing but wrong or bad and just being like, I'm taking time off. Even CEOs go on vacation. (laughs) Even CEOs meditate every day. Exactly. You know, there's no, there's no two ways about that. So what about now? Do you have your practice still where you're meditating and journaling and having your silence time and everything like that? Yes. Those are not, those are not going anywhere. Um, in fact, you know, I tell all my clients to do it, so <laughs> I should be doing it. You shouldn't get out of the habit of it. Should, so, should, should. 
Yes, exactly. Um, and those are non-negotiables. And it's funny because even my kids now, like, will sit and be quiet. And it's cool. Yes. It's like, you know, raise healthy kids, right? That's, that's what this is all about, right? So, yes, I'm, I'm still journaling. I'm still meditating. I still go on walks by myself. Um, we do, I don't know if you guys did it growing up in school, but, like, the stop, stop everything and read or drop oh. everything and read. I used to do that when I was in school, in elementary school. And so I was like, you know, I'm just going to institute this at home. And so we drop everything and read every day for 30 minutes. Oh my gosh, how cool. What a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. And it's not like me reading to anybody. It's just go find somewhere and read away from me. Um, <laughs> That's even better. Yes. So yeah, I mean like I've, and, and like since my husband works from home, um, He's even gotten in on it. So, like, maybe I just start a revolution with that. I don't know. But <laughs> um, I think the most important thing, if you want to be someone because people look up to you, is you set up that at home. And then from there, it ripples out. So, for me, you know, I've got five people watching everything I do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> And we all forget that they watch. They don't just listen, but they watch. Mm -hmm. And they and they're they're far more aware of what you're not doing when you say that you are. Yes. And they're very quick to point that out. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> God love them. Um so then the other thing that I would ask you is where's your support for that? Like did you it was one of the things that's really come out with these discussions is that support is is super key to maintaining that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, especially with the kids, but I would ask after your husband as well, since you guys are a, such a group effort, mm -hmm. that where's the support? The kids are obviously supportive of you doing that. Mm -hmm. And is he as well? Oh, my husband's very supportive of everything and has always been incredibly supportive um so he like he'll even check in he's like did you read today you know, wow. tell, tell me about what you're reading um and then I have two really close friends that I can tell everything to they're not in business they're just friends yeah you know and they they'll check in and we hold each other accountable for different things. And so like, you know, they'll check in like once a week or so and say, how's it going? What's, you know, what's new. Um, they're also the same people I work out with. So awesome. yeah, yeah, that's helpful. It is incredibly helpful. So, um, but I don't think that you can, nobody's meant to be an Island. So I don't think that you can really ever hit all of your goals and stay on track. If you don't have people just checking in. I love that. Nobody mm -hmm. is an island. Yeah. And it's so true. Yeah. And it's, but it's one of those things that as women entrepreneurs, we have this thing that we just keep thinking that we're an island mm -hmm. all the time. Everything that we do is wrapped around what we do alone. Yeah. And I think it's one of the killers. I think it's one of the reasons why so many women fail. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. And it's, it's sad though, because women shouldn't feel that way. And even when you're in like women business groups, like it's not like there's very few people that make like close lasting friendships because you yeah. feel like you have to put on a face of having it all together. Yeah. So then that would be, I guess, really a question then for you after that would be, Like, I don't even know how to word this actually, because it, it has something to do with, n with not having it all together. Mm -hmm. And I think you said something earlier about it, you know, everything's messy, mm -hmm. you know, and that that's okay. Yeah. Well, and how much better do you feel when you hear somebody telling you like how things aren't going well and you're like, <laughs> oh, you have that problem too? <laughs> you know, and it's, it's so silly, but it's like, yes, we all, we all have that, you know, whatever yeah. that problem is like, yeah. 
there's probably a hundred other people in the world that have that same issue, but nobody's talking about it. Yeah. You know, so we're attracted to messes. That's why people slow down when there's a wreck. And Uh so I think by being open with our messiness and being real and quit acting like we have everything together all the time, you know, then we'll all feel better and connected and be able to grow because it's like, okay, that person had that problem, but they fixed it. How did they fix it? Okay. I want to read about that. And so going from there versus like, you know, I never have a problem in the world. Yes, you do. Don't lie. (laughs) Well, knowing everybody's messiness takes away the shame of your own feeling that I'm, I'm a mess. Like I'm that Mm -hmm. Island of a mess. No one else is a mess. And I, you know, you feel ashamed because you're a mess. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you turn around and go, Oh wait, they have a mess too. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's not just me. I don't really have to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, I love that. It's a really, it's really awesome about this whole thing. Um, So let me ask you this. What would be your top tips? My top tips. Um, First of all, have somebody that you can talk to about everything. Somebody that, you know, sees you with no makeup on (laughs) and doesn't care. And go to that person and share everything. Even if you don't know what you're feeling, that you can just sit and be quiet with. Or will hold your hand while you cry. Um, Reevaluate what your priorities are. And allow your priorities to change. Um, I like that. Thank you. (laughs) Move your body. It doesn't have to be hardcore cardio. It can be yoga. It can be walking. It can be, you know, exercising in a chair. Just move your body because there's healing and getting your blood flowing and your heart pumping and those good endorphins. Sleep. (laughs) It's important. Get lots of sleep. And then um, sit and listen to your body. It'll tell you what it needs. And get comfortable with listening to your body. I think it's really funny that everything you said mm-hmm. doesn't have anything to do with business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, and, I, and not in a bad way, you mm-hmm. know, because I, for women, the personal is business as, and business is personal. Mm-hmm. So professional and personal are all intertwined with us. Yes. And the only way to have the professional work is to have the personal at least somewhat lined up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It doesn't have to be, you know, neat and pretty. Mm -hmm. The mess can still be there, but the personal is what allows the professional to flourish. Yes. I love that. And Mm -hmm. I I love that everything that you recommended, that your top tips are all personal stuff. (laughs) Brilliant. (laughs) It's brilliant. I love it. It's brilliant. Okay. So for our final bit of business, Mm -hmm. I want you to plug your biz. Tell us, tell us who you're looking for, why they should come talk to you and why they need you. Okay. Um, so you can come find me at essentially Kelly.com. If you are an overwhelmed, struggling person that has been trying to hit health goals and hasn't been able to, I can help you. Um, I can help you because I get real, but I care about you. I'm not afraid to call you on your BS, Hmm. but I don't like, I'm not a yeller or a screamer. (laughs) And um, I meet you where you are and we take little, little steps at a time. It's not an overhaul of your life. It's step by step. um, However you're comfortable changing it. So we might start with the emotional aspect before we even get to the exercise and the food and all the others and the supplements and the oils. Um, it just depends on the person. You really, you really customize for every person that you deal with. I do. 
I know even awesome. in the group programs, like they're written a certain way, but you have a choice of three things to do. So you're all going to be on different tracks. And that's okay because we're all different. So where can they sign up for this group program? Um, <laughs> right now they can go on Facebook to, um, if you go to facebook.com backslash coach Kelly with an I, Freeze, um, you can find it there. I, I have not made the sales page yet because <laughs> that's just how I am. Um, but that's, right. <laughs> that's how Kelly's rolling, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that is how Kelly's rolling. That's what happens when you're like, up at, you know, can't sleep. And so you write a program and you're like, let's just launch it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can find all of the information at, at, on the Facebook page or on Instagram at uh, essentially dot Kelly, K-E-L-L-I. Well, we'll put all those links up for you anyways. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Awesome. Kelly, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here. As always, it's so much fun to talk to you no matter what. And I really appreciate you being here. Your tips were fabulous and your words of wisdom were brilliant. So thank you very much. Thank you, Audrey. I had a blast. Good. I'm glad. And as for everybody else, all the links are connected to us. And I will be catching you guys on the flip side. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, Or even if you didn't, hit that subscribe button and share it with your friends. You can follow me on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher at Women Are The Journey. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time.